What's up you guys, welcome back to another one. If you were new to the channel, I am Gold Pony. I do new car, truck, SUV reviews on YouTube. And today, we are in the brand new 2022 Mazda CX-5, courtesy of Jack Giambalvo Mazda in York, PA. For more information on their inventory, please feel free to check out the link in the description box below. And by the way, they just got a brand new building and it smells like a brand new building on the inside. It's absolutely wonderful. But anyways, we're in the new CX-5 today because there's been some exterior design changes for the 2022 model year which I'm definitely a fan of also incredible reliability according to consumer reports just pick up a consumer reports magazine they give it a well above average reliability rating which is amazing all-wheel drive also now comes standard across the board for the CX-5 so that is definitely going to be good if you live in Pennsylvania like I do and you have to drive to work in the snow that's going to be very beneficial for you but ultimately in this video we will be testing out and going over everything about this one from acceleration to braking steering wheel, ride quality sound system exhaust clip all that fun stuff so having said that what do you guys say let's just go ahead and jump right into it and as always let's start with pricing it so as you can imagine there are an absolute ridiculous amount of trim levels available for the cx-5 first you have the s starting at 25,900. the select for 27.9 preferred for 29.6 carbon edition for 30,720 dollars premium for 32,310 premium plus for 33,950 which by the way is the one we have today and then you have the 2.5 turbo for 36,400 and lastly 2.5 turbo signature for 38,650 dollars and so as you can imagine with all of these trim levels there are actually two different engine configurations first one belonging to all the non-turbo trim levels that is a 2.5 liter direct injected inline four cylinder and the one of course that we have today 187 horsepower at 6,000 rpm 186 pound-feet of torque coming in at 4,000 rpm power sent to all four wheels through a six-speed automatic with paddle shifters if you go with the premium trim level and up for those paddle shifters at least zero to 60 time is going to come in at approximately 8.3 seconds seconds red line 6500 rpm with mpg numbers coming in at 24 in the city 30 on the highway taking regular unleaded fuel but so then you have the other option of course the turbocharged option that one is a 2.5 liter turbocharged inline four cylinder putting out 256 horsepower at 5000 rpm 320 pound feet of torque coming in at 2500 rpm power sent to all four wheels yet again through a six-speed automatic zero to 60 6.1 seconds that's dang impressive actually red line 6300 rpm mpgs 22 in the city 27 on the highway but here's the kicker with the fuel type regular unleaded fuel is perfectly fine you could do that but you're gonna get pretty substantially decreased power numbers but premium fuel is recommended for those power numbers that i just rambled off so did want to put it that way but anyways before we do any kind of fun paddle shifter or acceleration test here in our cx5 i want to mention the drive modes there's a little toggle switch looking thing just to the left of the shifter that's going to give you sport and off-road modes off-road only applies to the turbo engine option though i'll just put it that way but anyways it's going to adjust things like the shift points and the throttle response and now having got all of that out of the way what do you guys say let's go ahead and put the paddle shifters here to the test and let's see how quickly they are going to react for us and by the way there is a full manual shift mode you just simply slide the shifter all the way to the back and to the left that is going to give me full control over the shifting so let's just test out and see how quickly these paddle shifters are going to react for us here all right we got a red light here so on green we are going to test out the paddle shifters here we go okay Ever so slight, ever so slight, and actually better than normal. Typically when I test out paddle shifters in SUVs, there is 100% a delay. This isn't as bad as most, but there is a slight delay. It's not like BMW or Mercedes-Benz quick, but they're not bad, I gotta be honest. And typically in SUVs anyways, what you're gonna be using the paddle shifters for is to do a little bit of engine braking. Let's say it's snowing out and I'm going down this hill right now, rather than actually hitting the brakes and risk sliding off the road, I might do a little bit of downshifting with the paddle shifter. So let the engine do the braking so you're less likely to actually slide off the road so that's really what they're going to be there for in an suv anyways but i do like like i said i do like that they're there but anyways let's now go ahead and find yet another straightaway let's put the acceleration to the test here and let's see how quickly that zero to 60 in what did i say 8.2 8.3 feels in our non-turbocharged engine that we have here today all right a little bit of a rolling start not bad though It's actually not bad. I don't mind that. Honestly, it's kind of what I expected for this SUV. So you're not gonna have any issues in merging onto the highway. And you know one of the best parts, you guys? 
It's not a CVT. There's so many SUVs, so much competition to the CX-5 and they all use emotionless CVTs or continuously variable transmissions. But the six-speed automatic, it's dang refreshing because it actually gives you a little bit of driving emotion to that acceleration. So I give Mazda props for sticking with the six-speed automatic. It's definitely, honestly, a selling point for me. So. I like it. Anyways, to go along with that acceleration, as always, braking is equally important. And so up front, you will find 11.7 inch ventilated front discs in the back, 11.9 inch solid rear discs. And actually, didn't want to mention the turbocharged engine actually bumps up those front discs to 12.6 inch ventilated front discs. But as far as that 60 to zero stopping distance goes, they just going to come in at 129 feet, which to be honest, it's a little bit on the higher side of things. You do typically find 120s as far as that 60 to zero stopping distance goes, but sometimes even 130s actually but typically i like to be under 120 as far as that braking feel goes because it is a little bit on the softer side of things it's not bad it's something you get used to but just a little bit on the softer side of things for this suv but so then touching on suspension and handling up front you're going to get a mcpherson strut front suspension in the back independent multi-link rear suspension front and rear stabilizer bars as far as ride quality goes that's been perfectly fine in my short test drive here today so definitely not having any issues with the ride quality it's absorbing pennsylvania's to perfection is perfectly fine. As far as steering feel goes, that is the first thing I noticed when I got in the CX-5 and it's probably the main selling point for me personally, besides the stellar reliability, is the steering feel is on the heavy side, comparably speaking to all the competition for this SUV, which I love. Again, it's all about driving emotion with Mazda. And that is definitely the case with the CX-5. It's got a very nicely weighted steering feel. It's got the six-speed automatic. It's definitely a driver enthusiast SUV. SUV, I'll put it that way, which I love in this thing. So steering feels definitely on the heavier side of things. It instantly points you in the direction that you want to go. So big fan of that. As far as cabin noise goes, I am going about 10 miles per hour right now. So you guys are hearing absolutely nothing. But even when I was going a little faster, cabin noise is 100% on point as well. So no issues there. And actually for 2022, Mazda says there is a more rigid frame, which is said to improve noise levels. So that is another one of those new updates for 2022. And honestly, I could tell it was very quiet when I was on the highway there. So definitely no issues there, like I said. Then touching on visibility, I can see 100% perfectly fine out the back. And it is a kind of smaller SUV. So really shouldn't have any issues with that. Rain sensing windshield wipers though actually come standard across the board meaning whenever this thing detects any kind of mist or rainfall it's going to automatically turn on those windshield wipers for us that is pretty darn cool and there is a head-up display available for the premium plus trim level and up if you wanted to go that route as well but that pretty much rounds out the performance segment of this review you guys let's now go ahead and take a look at the exterior of our brand new 2022 mazda cx-5 all right you guys so here she is the new 2022 mazda cx-5 finished in soul red crystal metallic pretty cool name for an exterior color of a vehicle and actually i do like it it looks pretty darn good but anyways revised front fascia for the 2022 model year definitely looks good not that the older one looked bad but i do like the slimmer look of the front headlights specifically they definitely look pretty darn good up there but speaking of let's go ahead and start up front on the cx-5 matte black front lip for all trims but the turbo signature because then it is going to be body colored of course of course you have some chrome trim surrounding the bottom portion of that front grille that looks pretty darn good as well to the sides led headlights do come standard they of course come with the automatic feature as well along with automatic high beams meaning when you have your high beams on at night and it senses a vehicle coming in the opposite direction it's going to automatically dim them back to low beams then when that vehicle is gone it's going to bump that back up then to high beams so that is pretty nice led daytime running lights also coming standard like i said re designed headlight housings for the better. I love the look of the slimmer LED headlights up front. They definitely look very good. Adaptive front lighting system though actually comes standard with the turbo trim levels, meaning when you're going around a bend at night, those headlights are going to swivel dependent upon the steering angle. Better help illuminating what is around that bend so you're less likely to hit a deer or a possum or a snail or whatever it is. So that is pretty darn good as well. But anyways, pretty much rounds out the front end of this one. Let's now go ahead and make our way to the side of this cx5 it's open now since we are around to the side of the cx5 no roof rails are going to come standard however they are optional if you wanted to go that route so i wanted to specify that rear privacy glass does come standard across the board that looks good body colored power adjustable side mirrors coming standard with led integrated turn signals and if you were to go with one of the turbo trim levels you will also get power folding side mirrors then as well then take a look down at the wheel setup 17 by 7 inch aluminum alloys for the s select and 
preferred trim levels, 19 by seven inch black alloys for the carbon edition, premium, premium plus, and turbo. And then you got 19 by seven inch silver aluminum alloys for the turbo signature. But again, that pretty much rounds out the side. I do like the chrome belt line molding found on the side here as well. So definitely looks good. But now let's go ahead and make our way to the back of the CX-5. All right, so now since we are around to the back of this one, body colored shark fin antenna found all the way to the top. Just below that rear spoiler with an integrated brake light, just below that rear window wiper, LED tail lights coming standard for every single trim level across the board. And again, a slight redesign for those tail light housing. So that definitely looks good. Of course, you got the CX-5 and all wheel drive badging back there. Just below it all, you will find some matte black accents on the lower portion of that rear bumper and to the sides, dual exhaust outlets with chrome tips. So having said that, I do believe you guys know what we have to do next as always here is that exhaust clip. So now since we are around to the back of the CX-5, when it comes to opening that rear tailgate, it is a power tailgate if you go with the preferred trim level and up, meaning there is a button on the key fob, there is a button on the tailgate itself, and a button by the driver's side left knee then as well. But once opened up, cargo capacity comes in at 30.8 cubic feet. If that was not enough space, there is a 40-20-40 split, meaning the rear seats do fold down, bumping that up to 59.3 cubic feet. Of course, there is some cargo lighting found in that cargo area as expected. There's actually a 12 volt power outlet back there then as well. And then if you were to lift up underneath of that cargo floor, you will find a spare tire, which I personally prefer over the fix a flat as well, which is pretty cool. But then making our way up to the rear legroom, that is going to come in at 39.6 inches so for reference i'm an even six feet tall this is how much space i had back there rear ventilation does come standard for the select trim level and up rear center armrest with cup holders coming standard for all trim levels across the board there are dual rear usb charging ports for the select trim level and up and the best part about those charging ports they're not actually located in uh, just below the air vents they're actually located within the center armrest there so I love that because if you're a kid, that's gonna be a much bigger reach for you if they were located underneath the air vent. So it's so much more convenient that they're located within that center armrest where there's also kind of a little bit of storage there, like a tablet holder almost as well. So it's pretty darn convenient the way they actually set up that center armrest back there. So I was a big fan of that, but also heated rear seats coming with the premium plus trim level. And again, those heated seat buttons are actually located within the center armrest yet again. So that's pretty cool. Anyways, then make our way up to the front seats, manually adjustable cloth seating coming with the S, leatherette suede combo coming with the select, leather seating coming with the preferred trim level and up, heated front seats for the select trim level and up, six-way power driver seat for the select, eight-way power driver seat with power lumbar coming with the preferred trim level and up, six-way power adjustable passenger seat with the preferred trim level and up, and ventilated front seats for the premium plus and turbo trim levels. And overall, seating was plenty comfortable. You could easily go on a long road trip here in the CX-5. Anyways, then take a look at the steering wheel. It is tilt and telescoping. It is leather wrapped for all trim levels and then heated for the premium plus trim level and the turbo trim levels then as well. So no issues there. Then make our way to the startup. Let me start by showing you guys the key. You do have your Mazda logo on the one side. Then looking at the side, you actually have lock, unlock, and that button to pop the rear hatch. All of your buttons are actually on the side of the key there, but it is all keyless entry with a push button start. So all I'm going to do here is simply put my foot on the brake and press that engine start button located just by the driver's right knee. And so, but then upon startup, tachometer is all the way to your left. Speedometer is front and center. By the way, there is going to be a larger seven inch LCD display if you were to go with one of the turbo trim levels. Obviously we don't have that today, but still overall, pretty much everything you could possibly want up there. You do have how many miles you have left until you hit empty. That's gonna be located immediately to the right Right of that center speedometer. And of course, if you press the info button on the left side of the steering wheel, you can adjust what is located within that center speedometer as well. So a bunch of different options there since that is the digital portion of the gauges after all. But overall, when it comes to interior quality now, power moonroof coming with the preferred trim level and up. So we do have that today. That's pretty cool. Overhead sunglass holder coming standard for all trim levels. Auto dimming rear view mirror with home link controls for the preferred trim level and up. You will get LED interior lighting for the turbo signature dual zone climate control for the select trim level and up and you will get some wood trim on the turbo signature as well but honestly i kind of like the uh 
the grainy look that we have just above the passenger side glove box that carries onto the door. It looks like wood. It's not real wood. It is plastic, but it looks good. I'll say that. A lot of soft touch material as well. Just in front of the shifter, you have a decent amount of rubberized storage along with a 12 volt power outlet. Behind the shifter, you have an electromechanical parking brake, dual cup holders, and a decent amount of storage within the center armrest along with the 12 volt power outlet and two USB charging ports then as well. So overall, interior quality is perfectly fine. It certainly gets the job done. So then taking a look at the infotainment screen, there is a 10 and a quarter inch screen that comes standard across the board. It is not touch screen. The way you control it is you use the circular dial and buttons located directly behind the shifter, which kind of is more convenient anyways when you're driving. You don't want to be reaching that far and taking your eyes off the road. But anyways, Bluetooth and audio streaming do come standard. Android Auto, Apple CarPlay, factory navigation system for the turbo signature trim level. You can also find some driving statistics up there if you wanted to. And of course, your radio information as well. And so when it comes to the sound systems, there are three of them, actually. You will get four speakers for the S trim level, six speakers for the select preferred and carbon edition, and then a 10 speaker Bose sound system for the premium trim level and up. So having said that, we do, of course, have that Bose sound system with us here today. So what do you guys say? Let's go ahead and turn on the radio, see what we got playing today. And let's test out the clarity of this one. Yeah. Guys, honestly, that sound system was amazing. I wish I had that Bose sound system in my own car because that was wonderful. The bass was intense. Clarity was crystal clear. Quite honestly, for the CX-5, it's absolutely perfect. And I've had Bose sound systems in my cars before. They've never failed me. Bose is a very reputable company, so they're definitely there for reliability and they're long lasting. So that was an amazing sound system for the CX-5. But anyways, last thing I wanted to mention to you guys on the infotainment screen is when you do put the CX-5 in reverse, you will find a rear view camera camera coming standard across the board and if you were to go with the turbo signature you're also going to get a 360 degree monitor as well which is always is going to lead us into safety and so IIHS top safety pick plus first thing I wanted to mention because that pretty much says it all right there that's the very highest rating given out by IIHS front side side curtain airbags do come standard in the back you're gonna have latch aka lower anchors and tethers for children for the rear car seats real child door locks tire pressure monitoring system but also coming standard for all trim levels across the board will be hill start assist blind spot monitoring system with rear cross traffic alert adaptive cruise control with stop and go automatic emergency braking with pedestrian detection forward collision warning and lane departure warning with lane keep assist then as well then if you were to go with the turbo signature that is going to add to that front and rear parking sensors driver attention monitoring system smart city brake support and traffic jam assist then as well so overall when it comes to my final thoughts i do like the slight refresh i think the slimmer headlight and taillight designs look absolutely amazing so big fan of that excellent excellent steering feel i absolutely love that it's one of the best part really about driving any mazda is the steering feel and the handling is absolutely amazing great reliability just look at consumer reports for that perfect safety so if you have kids this is definitely a vehicle you should not feel sorry about driving because it is the best safety rating you could possibly get as far as room for improvement goes um where's the wireless phone charger i wouldn't have minded seeing that Full digital gauge cluster, of course, would be pretty darn sweet as well. And it doesn't have as much space as some of the competitors. So that's really the main drawback, I guess you could say, for the CX-5 is the overall space. But overall, I was definitely a big fan. Let me know what you guys think of the new CX-5 in the comments section below. That is about it for this one, you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Feel free to follow me on social media at the bottom of the screen if you want to see what's coming next on the channel before it actually gets to YouTube. Be sure to hit the subscribe and the bell notification button if you're in the new car reviews. That is what we do here on this channel after all. Feel free to pick up some merch just below the video if you do and you post a picture of you wearing the merch on either Instagram or Twitter. I'm going to automatically follow you. So whenever you guys support the channel, I am so appreciative, let me tell you. But anyways, do appreciate you guys watching more than you know, and I will see you guys all in the next video. Stay gold.